Number 10 is Prize Fighters, a game that essentially plays like Super Punch Out plus really damn good touch controls. Prize Fighters is flat out a phenomenal game that I would easily pay money for. However, it's free, so you do get some of the upgrade type stuff to keep you playing the game, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that, in all honesty, I don't care at all. I'm significantly more satisfied with this game than literally every single other boxing game that has been made on mobile. Number 9 is Jumanji the Game, a game that I'm probably not going to give as huge of an endorsement as prize fighters because there's a lot of games that aren't terribly different from this. However, as far as PvP card games go, I think if you play this, you'd be pleasantly surprised. I'm not going to say that the mechanics are really that astoundingly different from other games. Roll dice, play card, etc, etc. It's just that it actually has a good card set. Jumanji lends itself to this type of thing. At least the version of Jumanji they've made for the new movie. And it doesn't hurt that the game actually does have a cool art style. I'm not going to say that if you don't like card games, this is one that you're going to like. But if you do like card games, this is probably one you should try. Number 8 is Timber West, a game from the creators of Timberman, who have created a pretty good series of very simple games that have very simple controls and are incredibly addictive and fun to play. This is one of them. This is the tap shooting version of the Timber series, and it has very simple controls. You tap to aim and shoot, you can get different characters, there's a lot of different areas, there's a lot of different themes. The charming pixel art of the Timber series persists, and frankly at this point I think that this dev isn't capable of making a game that isn't fun. I'm not going to tell you that these are going to change your life, any of the Timber series, but they're all fun as hell and I certainly play them on constant basis, including the original Timberman, which has been out quite a while at this point, so I gotta say, give it a shot. Number 7 is Mayhem, a 2D multiplayer arena shooter, which yes, that kind of arena shooter with heroes and different abilities, different classes, all of that stuff, except for 2D side-scrolling, and good god, it works. It so works. Now you have to keep in mind it is a little limited, it's 3 versus 3, there's some objective-based stuff, there's death matches, and there's not a lot else yet, they are developing the game, however, and honestly, even in its simple form, this is unique, it is interesting, it's fun. This is something that I cannot wait to see where it goes, because it is great. Number six is Amazing Katamari Damacy, which, yeah, it's that. It's hard to describe it a lot further if you haven't actually played Katamari Damacy. It's a very unique experience, and it's fun as hell, in which you basically roll and attract debris and things that are just lying around to make a huge ball. This version is the Endless Runner version because it's mobile, and it probably makes sense to have a shorter, more compact experience, and I have to say, it's probably a good choice. I really am enjoying this. I was initially a little bit worried about them limiting the prospects, but I don't think it's actually a problem. It works really well on mobile, and it takes some of the conventions you're familiar with mobile games and introduces Katamari Damacy's mechanics really, really well. This is a franchise known for being bizarre, and this game doesn't have as many opportunities to throw that in your face, but it is still pretty bizarre. Thankfully so. Number five is Like a Boss, which is a game in which it feels like an MMORPG, but it's really not. And I'll tell you one major reason why you're playing as the boss. It's called Like a Boss for a reason, not just because they heard a Lonely Island song a decade ago, but essentially you're the protector of the dungeon, you protect your territory, there's various quests in which heroes will come and try to thwart you. And you might think, well, this is a novel idea, but the gimmick wears off after a while. No, you're wrong. There's a lot of the conventions that you might expect from this type of game, such as crafting, guilds, and frankly, a lot of other interesting stuff. It's a different take on a genre that needed a different take, and frankly, I'm there. Number four is Arena of Valor, and if you want League of Legends on your phone, this is as close as you're going to get. It's a game that's been operating over in China for quite a while, and luckily enough, when it came over here, they retained all of the stuff that has been added since launching there. So what we've gotten is basically a game that has been around a while and has an absolute buttload of stuff to do in it. There are so many heroes in this game at launch, it is ridiculous. I would not spend money on the heroes if you want to have all the heroes, because the game is already at a point where you would spend a large amount of money. When I say that this is like League of Legends, I say that in every way. It's published by Tencent, who is a really big, scary company that owns Riot Games, who made League of Legends, and they're just like, I don't care if it's a ripoff, we want this on mobile, and we don't want to bother the Riot Games people, we just want to own this space on mobile, and they will. Number three is BB Tan 2. It is a sequel to the Brick Breaking game that I may have mispronounced the name of, but I've never actually had to say it somewhere official, so. Basically, if you're familiar with a Brick Breaker, you understand exactly what's going on here. They've expanded upon their original concept by adding new power-ups, some new blocks, but generally, it's a Brick Breaker. It's not a complex affair, but it's one that's done more than competently, and I found myself wasting an increasing amount of time with it. Number two is Ace Attorney Investigations, which takes Miles Edgeworth outside of the courtroom and investigates. I don't know if you played this game when it originally came out, but for me, it was the definitive Ace Attorney game. I freaking love Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth. You basically find out about a crime, go to a bunch of crime-oriented places, including the crime scene, the dwellings of people involved, and you try to put together what happened. 
It's awesome. And then finally, number one is Inside, which is somewhat of a depressing game, but frankly a platformer that I consider very interesting. At its heart, it's a 2D puzzle platformer, but it's also just an absolute masterclass in how to use aesthetics to tell a story. To say there's black humor in the game is an understatement. There's irony, there's consequence, there's post-apocalyptic dystopia, and nothing is said. It's quiet, and it's perfect. This is such a good game, and it's free on iOS right now. Do not pass this up. What was your favorite?